The mi is the mandolin really loud or is that just kind of part of the way it sounds up here? It's okay? Yep. Okay, it just sounds weird up here. Well, I've never done this one before, so here I go. Up in the, up in the far, far north in the 19, well, back in the gold rush era, people didn't, well, their fingers were too cold to play guitars and play music, so they, they do poetry around the campfire. And I learned this poem. It refers to Robert Service. Some of you may know Robert Service, one of the great gold mine poets and a few other kind of um, gold era references, so I'll do my best. The Ballad of Yukon Jake. Oh, the North Country, it's a harsh country. The mother's a bloody brood. Her icy arms hold distant charms for the greedy, the sinful, the lewd. And strong men rust with the gold and the lust that sears the Northland soul. But the wickedest born from the Cape to the Horn was the hermit of Shark's Tooth Shoal. Well, Jacob came was the hermit's name in the days of his pious youth, ere he cast a smirch on the Baptist church by betraying a girl named Ruth. And strong men shake at Yukon Jake, the hermit of Shark's Tooth Shoal, for that is the name that Jacob came as known by from Nome to the Pole. He was just a boy in the parson's joy ere he fell for the gold and the dust. And he learned how to pray with the hogs and the hay on a farm near Keokuk, that's Keokuk, Iowa. But a service, Robert service, tale of Yuka, a tale of illicit kale and women and whiskey wild, drove the morals clean as a soup tureen from that poor but honest child. He craved the bite of a Yukon night and the northern lights weird flicker. He wanted a game of stud in the mud and to taste raw red liquor. He wanted to mush along in the slush with a team of husky hounds and aim his gat at a beaver hat and knock it out of bounds. So he left his home for the Helltown Gnome on the ice-ripped Arctic shores, and he learned how to curse and drink and worse, till the rum ran from his pores. And when the boys in his spree were drinking it free in a Malamute saloon, and Dan McGrew and his dangerous crew shot craps with a piebald coon, and the boy in a stool played like a fool a jagtime melody, and the barkeep vowed to his hard-boiled crowd that he'd cremate Sam McGee, well, Jacob came, who had taken the name of Yukon Jake the Killer, would rake the dive with his 45 till the atmosphere grew chiller. With a sharp command, he'd make them stand and deliver their hard-earned dust. Then he'd drink the bar dry of rum and rye as a Yukon bully must. Without coming to blows, he'd tweak the nose of dangerous Dan McGrew, and becoming bolder, he'd throw over his shoulder the lady that's known as Boo. Oh, tough as a steak was old Yukon Jake, more hard-boiled than a picnic egg. He'd wash his shirt in Klondike dirt and drink his rum by the keg. Out of fear of their lives or because of their wives, he was shunned by the best of his pals, an outcast he from the society of all but wild animals. So he bought on the whole of Shark's Tooth Shoal, a reef in the Bering Sea, and he lived by himself on a sea lion's shelf in lonely iniquity. But miles away in Keokuk, IA, did a ruined maiden fight to remove the smirch from the Baptist church by bringing the heathen light. And all would be spared, the elders declared, if she would if, but spread that holy word from her Keokuk home to the Helltown Gnome and save those sinful birds. So, two weeks later, she was on a freighter, bound for that gold-cursed land near the pole. But heaven ain't made for a woman betrayed. She was wrecked on Shark Tooth Shoal. All hands were tossed in the sea and lost, all but the maiden Ruth, who swam to the edge of the sea lion ledge, where abode the love of her youth. He was hunting a seal for his evening meal. He handled a mean harpoon, when he found at his feet, not something to eat, but a girl in a frozen swoon, who he dragged to his lair by her dripping wet hair. Then he rubbed her knees with gin. And when he opened her eye, when she opened her eyes, much to his surprise, she revealed his original sin. His eight-month beard grew stiff and weird and felt like a chestnut burr. And he swore by his gizzard and the Arctic blizzard that he'd do right by her. And a cold tear froze on the end of her nose and gleamed like a Tekla pearl. And the bright hair fell like flames from hell down the, black, the back of that grateful girl. But a hopeless rake was Yukon Jake, the hermit of Shark's Tooth Shoal. And that dizzy maid, he betrayed, he ruined her mortal soul. Then he rowed her ashore with a broken oar, and he sold her to Dan McGrew for a husky dog and some hot eggnog, as rascals are wont to do. Now Ruthless Ruth is a maid uncouth, with rouge-stained cheeks and lips. And she sings rough songs to the drunken throngs that arrive from the sealing ships. For a rouge-stained kiss from this infamous miss, she will deliver a seal's sleek fur. Or perhaps a sable, if they are able, is much the same to her. Oh, the North Country, it's a harsh country, the mother's a bloody brood. Her icy arms hold hidden charms for the greedy, the sinful, the lewd. And strong men rust with the gold and the lust that sears the Northland soul. But the wickedest born from the Cape to the Horn was the hermit of Shark's Tooth Shore.
Yeah! Awesome.